The shipwreck video for today will be another break from the normal format. In this video, we will look at three U-boats instead of a singular wreck. Furthermore, I will not focus as much on individual details. The existing pictures aren't really good for that format. Instead, I will focus on the history of these German submarines, how they ended up scuttled in one place, along with how and why they were rediscovered and, ultimately, why they had to be buried twice over. This will, as such, be a fairly short video. I hope it will still be interesting, though, for those who enjoy shipwreck content. With that disclaimer done, let's get into it. Beginning with how these U-boats ended up in the position they're in. If you've studied the Battle of the Atlantic at all, you've probably heard of the Great Submarine Pens. Alternatively, you are around my age and played the classic Medal of Honor games, which involved infiltrating these structures. These massive concrete monstrosities that the Germans built up and down the coast. From France to northern Germany to Norway. These are quite distinctive, and most have endured to the modern day, simply by virtue of being too much effort to destroy. They were built thick and tough enough to resist bombing, and that also made them resistant to explosive demolition. The relevant one for this video, however, is the Elba II pen in Hamburg. This is one of the few that was destroyed after the war. This structure was used for fitting out submarines more than as an active military base. That task was reserved for the Great Bunkers in France or Norway. Not that it stopped the Allies from bombing Elba II. In a sign of how strongly these were built, the bunker took a direct hit from a tall boy, and it only bent the roof a little. I'll probably do a video covering the bunker itself in the future, but the relevant bit for now is this. Towards the end of the war, there were five U-boats sheltering inside Elba II. Two Type 7s, and three of the cutting edge, although flawed, Type 21s. The Type 7s would be scuttled outside the submarine pen. The three Type 21s, however, were all scuttled inside the bunker. These boats were U-3506, U-2505, and U-3004. None of them saw any active combat service, with all three boats used for training. Not an uncommon fate for Type 21s, as they entered the war far too late to have any material impact on it. In the case of these U-boats, U-3506 was commissioned on October 16, 1944. U-2505 was commissioned on November 7, 1944. And U-3004 was commissioned on August 30th of, you guessed it, 1944. As they were used for training patrols, these boats were kept close to home. That's how they ended up in Elba II, as the war drew to a close. I've seen reference to U-2505 being damaged by an air raid, and U-3004 having an accident while test diving. If that's the case, it would explain why those two were in the bunker. It would also explain why they were scuttled inside the pen instead of outside it. They were being repaired from damage. However, the story of these submarines is a bit of a murky one. This is also fairly common for late war Germany. Even this much information is more than most would have, and certainly better than a lot of Japanese records. In any event, while the Type 7s were pulled out, the Type 21s remained inside the pen and were scuttled by their own crews. Perhaps because of damage to the boats, perhaps because of damage to the pen. A second massive bomb hit had blown the doors clean off, so that might have something to do with it as well. Their story would probably have ended at this point, with the boat scrapped in place after Hamburg was occupied by the British. Except, in another bit of mystery, that isn't what happened. For whatever reason, the British made no effort to scrap the U-boats in place after occupying the port. Instead, on November 11th of 1945, they blew the pen up. Or rather, they attempted to. The occupying forces gathered up captured Luftwaffe explosives, and then detonated them inside the submarine shelter. While there aren't many pictures of this, 
there are pictures like this one of the British doing the same to the nearby Fink 2 shelter. The ultimate effect of these detonations was the destruction of the dividing wall between the two pens in Elba 2. This collapsed the ceiling, bringing it down on top of U-3506, U-2505, and U-3004 were largely fine aside from the scuttling damage. Towards the end of the 1940s, the British reversed course and recruited ex-German sailors to go into the collapsed bunker to scrap the submarines. This succeeded in further damaging the more intact boats, but was ultimately a failure. It was considered, rightfully so, too dangerous to finish the process in a half-wrecked bunker. The partially scrapped boats were left in place and largely forgotten about, to the point you'll see older sources say they were scuttled in the river. As it was, they remained in place, until in the 1980s, the boats were rediscovered. I'm saying that with air quotes, by the way, because the shipping company that owned the crumbling pen knew very well that those U-boats were there. They just didn't spread that around to deter people running around their operations. However, that company shuttered the yard in 1985. Without security guarding the ruins of Elba II, relic hunters descended upon it, looking to loot whatever they could from the wrecked U-boats. That would be where the pictures sprinkled through this video came from. You can see the shape of the submarines, even after the damage they took, in these pictures. You can also see, in this picture in particular, where the scrapping process removed metal. The skeletal look of a partially stripped hulk is quite visible in this picture. And yet, the submarines remained remarkably intact. This picture of what seems to be the bow of one of the boats looks almost undamaged. Bear in mind that when this picture was taken, evidently 1992, these had been sitting in the water for almost 50 years on top of the scuttling, scrapping, and general neglect. It's hard to see much of poor U-3506, however, with the collapsed roof on top of her. The pressure hull of the submarine was quite tough, though, to remain intact with that much concrete falling on top of her. As for the other two, I think this picture does the best job of showing how much they were stripped. The frame of one of them is completely visible, ribs and all, and the other one has a gaping hole that was filled with water at some point, presumably tidal action filling up the efforts of the scrappers. If this picture is to be believed, the one with the exposed frame, and closest to the collapse, is U-2505, and the one with the gaping hole is U-3004. Other images from closer in show more of the scrapping process. It was not a particularly pretty job, although scrapping rarely is. These images simply show how rushed it was, without any particular rhyme or reason to the work. Again, perfectly understandable. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to be the one asked to go into a collapsed bunker to scrap a sunken U-boat. I'm almost more impressed with how much they managed. I've known about these submarines for a long time, but I've never actually looked for pictures, and seeing how stripped these are is impressive to me. That said, the German government was understandably leery of people spelunking into a collapsed bunker to loot old submarines. That was incredibly dangerous for any number of reasons. As a result, in 1995, a decision was made to seal off the bunker to prevent someone from hurting themselves. Or worse. However, this was initially done by filling the inside of the pen with gravel and sand. This might have seemed like enough at the time, but it wasn't. Intrepid relic hunters simply figured out where the hatches into the U-boats were located and dug an entrance through the sand. Presumably quite tired of this at this point, a further effort was made at the dawn of the 21st century. Between 2001 and 2003, the remnants of the bunker were completely removed. Whatever remained of Elba II 
was buried beneath a shipping terminal seen here with the submarines underneath it. While those unfortunate U-boats remain beneath the ground to this day, they're no longer accessible. Interestingly, this is not the only case of this happening to a German wreck of this time period. Admiral Scheer was partially broken up in place after she sank at dock and then buried. Regardless, that brings us to the end of this video. This final picture is, I think, a fitting one to round off on a look into the ruined submarine pen with the partially scrapped U-boats resting like the skeletons of metal whales. It's a striking look into the past in a lot of ways. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.